we don't need our U.S. Soccer Governing Federation to necessarily do the hands-on fixing of American soccer's problems with initiatives, special programs, more funding to certain places. And I'm not saying there's no place for federation initiatives. There certainly are in uh, soccer federations around the world. But the problem is U.S. soccer is completely missing the mark on its ultimate essence and purpose, which is ultimately a regulatory body over the American soccer industry or ecosystem. Their job is not necessarily to build and maintain all the infrastructure that uh, grows American soccer in terms of our player pool and our national team talent and our clubs and our leagues necessarily. Their job is just to oversee the marketplace to make sure that A, the market stays open, uh, kind of a capitalist open market system is what you see in open systems around the world and then B, to maintain proper regulation and maintain, make sure everyone has a fair chance to compete based on merit in that ecosystem. So it's capitalism that is well regulated. That pretty much sums up what an open system of promotion relegation is in a soccer nation. And uh, no one is saying that Capitalism guarantees outcomes for anyone. We are not saying that everyone gets fair results. What we are saying is everybody's going to get a fair chance to show their stuff as a soccer entity, whether that be fans or uh, club administration, coaches, players. Uh, everyone is going to get a fair shot to show what they can do on the field and in the uh, extensions around that in soccer clubs, which are the businesses in the American soccer industry, the main business units that compete. Um, and so U.S. soccer's job is just to make sure that the competition is fair, that everyone is uh, has incentive to compete for the top of the pile, that we have a, a thriving competition, and to make sure that no one has any bad monopolies or no one is, is shafted or, or trapped in uh, a quagmire of, of lower division captivity like we have here today in American soccer. So people are saying, oh, well, U.S. soccer needs to fix things. It needs to come up with some grand scheme. Oh, if we can make a national training center and then we'll have these, uh, uh, these residency programs. So, you know, kids starting at six years old will come to the residency program and we're going to train them up to be our national team. No, that's not what we need. What happens in real open systems is that the competition takes care of itself. Uh, Federation national team development really is done by the individual club. So what you need to do is make an ecosystem that fosters good, healthy competition, fierce competition. And clubs, thousands of clubs will be trying to one-up each other and to make it to the top of their domestic pyramid and to get into international competition, of course, to ultimately well, be profitable, to make money, and to achieve glory, win trophies. So uh, all U.S. soccer needs to do is just uh, make the competition fair, and then clubs will take care of the development itself. Right now you have 9,000 plus U.S. soccer clubs uh, currently existing at right, a youth and uh, adult level, uh, but you have one single club, MLS, and it's 20-some franchise outlets. It's the only one that are allowed into the top echelon of the industry. So you basically have killed incentive to compete for 9,000 USA soccer clubs. Well, what does that mean when you have no incentive to invest in anything? Well, that means that 9,000 clubs do not build free-to-play academies, do not build scouting networks, and you have tons of jobs, tons of opportunities for adult players and young players uh, destroyed simply by one bad U.S. soccer policy, which has given uh, basically uh, 
rights of victory to one single company. They basically killed the entire competition. And then we wonder why American soccer as a whole suffers as a result. No one cares about our domestic club soccer because it's, it's pretty lame. Our Division One MLS has franchise outlets which can't compete against real clubs abroad. And then our lower division teams can barely pay players because what's the point? There's no ROI for investing in the lower division. So it might, it might as well just be a little hobby thing with amateur players. Um, and so no one cares about American soccer, but we love foreign soccer. Um, so the, the answer here is not to come up with some new scheme or some new initiative to figure out the magic formula to creating a great soccer nation. We have the template staring us in the face all over the world. It's simply a free market with good regulation, so open market with promotion relegation, governed by a strong governing federation. We can look at Spain, we can look at Italy, we can look at England as great examples. We all love their domestic club competitions, so why aren't we trying to mirror them? Even Mexico to our south, yeah, they have a little bit they have a kind of an odd version of an open system that's a little bit more closed, but it's still open to clubs from the lower divisions. They can get to Liga MX, the Mexican Division One, and so even a small slice of hope is better than no hope at all for lower divisions. And so Mexican soccer is thriving, even here in the States. Americans, uh, the most popular league or domestic club competition in America is uh, Liga MX, our neighbors to the south. So we can learn something from open competitions around the world. We're just being stubborn and we think American is an exception and has to be run in a completely different way in the U.S. sports mold. Uh, when the U.S. sports model is about as un-American as you can get. Uh, it doesn't, just because we have another American-only sports doesn't mean we have to try to stuff the world's game, soccer, into that uh, closed U.S. sport model. Let's just align with the rest of the world and replicate what they're doing. And then the, everything will take care of itself. Is it going to be utopia? You know, there's going to be club collapses in an open system. There will be players who don't make it in an academy and you know, ultimately you know, don't make it in soccer. Yeah, that's the reality of open competition. No one is saying that this is going to cure cancer or create ultimate perfection. Uh, but we are saying that you know, an open system with a proper competition can solve 90 plus percent of American soccer's woes. The, the problems we see are just symptoms of completely poisonous policy, which like I mentioned earlier, uh, pretty much destroys the competition, you know, kills incentive for the vast majority of constituents in American soccer. So we wonder why we see mediocrity. Well, it's because we've set a policy of mediocrity at the U.S. Soccer Governing Federation level. Their job is to do their job as a governing federation, which is open the market, make it free and open for all, and then make sure it's well-regulated and fair so that everyone has an equal shot to compete. That's all U.S. Soccer needs to do. We don't need any uh, fancy initiatives or programs. That's just jargon, I think. It's just distraction to get people to think that something is being done. It's just done to preserve the status quo. If you hear some fancy, oh, we're going to do this elite academy scouting initiative network. Uh, this will get us to a World Cup in 2026. We'll win the World Cup, or whatever their next uh, target date is for our self-actualization as a soccer nation. Um, it's all distraction. Let's cut to, the, cut to the chase and let's open the market to all. Let's quit being global soccer deniers and align our soccer with the wildly successful open system model that we see around the world. So it's the responsibility of the Federation to reform U.S. soccer, but their job is just to remove one horrible closed market, closed ecosystem policy. Open the market with promotional relegation, U.S. soccer, and that's all you need to do. If you won't do that, then we will get a new USA Soccer Federation to take your place and get FIFA's sanctioning for it. So if you like this video, make sure to share it out across social media, and I'll subscribe right here to my channel, and I'll talk to you soon.